The Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has warned against treating COVID-19 privately. But some prominent Nigerians have disregarded the directives of the government. This has created worry across the country. And Senator Ali Ndume alleges that palliative distribution is fraudulent and the president has asked him to back up his allegations with facts. This is Plus Politics and I am Benny Ark. Rules set by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, NCDC, as regards the treatment of coronavirus and the isolation procedures has been discovered to be disobeyed by some prominent individuals in the country. These individuals patronized private hospitals in dealing with coronavirus matters, which is contrary to the NCDC's directive. Also, according to the last survey from NOI Polls Limited, a country-specific polling service, nearly three in every ten Nigerians believe they have some form of immunity to the coronavirus. Now joining us via Skype is Francis Faduyile, pre President of the Nigerian Medical Association, the NMA. Good evening, Francis, and thank you for joining the program. Good evening. It's my pleasure to be with you this evening. It has been discovered that several prominent persons have disregarded the NCDC's directive and are patronizing private hospitals. Now, in your opinion, what could be the reason for this? Well, thank you very much. I think it's important for us to know that Nigerians believe that surely they want to protect themselves from every other person. And in this regard, now we have this coronavirus pandemic in Nigeria. Because of the travel restrictions, many of the quote and unquote men in Nigeria have not had that opportunity of traveling abroad for them to be treated. So the hospitals within the country that usually take care of the general populace suddenly became the only place that they can go. And because they have rated themselves beyond that, they have to start looking for other places where they can be treated. And I think that is why they have, a, they have put, a, uh, put pressure on some private institutions where they will have that three-star or four-star uh, care in the hospitals. Now, prior to this time, um, Fadjile, you and I know that many Nigerians um, opt for the use of private hospitals because they don't so much believe in, in the health care they will get from um, government-owned hospitals. Sh couldn't this be also be another reason? And why were the private hospitals not also involved in, in being part of this whole process for testing and treatment of, of COVID-19? The truth about the matter is that it is very wrong for any private hospital or private institution, for that matter, to attempt to treat COVID-19 positive patients. And uh, I know that even the public institutions that, is treating, that are treating COVID-19 patients are also uh, made to pass through some form of accreditation process. Although the accreditation process, I have uh, been informed somehow that they want to explain, extend it to the private institution, which I think it is not good at this time. Your, we need medical, to know in that your COVID-19 opinion. is a highly contagious disease, that we need to have a lot of facility engineering works for them to be able to adequately treat COVID-19. There must be training of the staff, not only the medical doctors, everybody in that building, uh, in that facility, from the nurses to the cleaners to those people who dispense drugs and to those who are in the waste disposal. All these people must undergo special training for them to be effectively uh, treat COVID-19. And in this wise, it is very wrong. It is unethical that we have any medical doctor involved himself in the treatment of COVID-19 in his private facility. Dr. Francis, I hear you when you say it is, it is, it is wrong to have any doctor treat um, COVID-19 patients in their clinic. Now, the first case of COVID-19 was discovered in Nigeria in February, 20, 20, 27th of February, if, if I get that date correctly. Now, prior to that time, from 27th of February to where we are now, 
Do you think somehow there could have been some kind of synchronization between the NCDC and most of these private hospitals to help at such a time as this? Their efforts become complementary and not necessarily referring to them as um, not uh, accredited to be the, the people patients can go to who suspect they might be having COVID-19. Why don't we see a synchronization and complementary of effort by this time between the NCDC and these private hospitals? Well, you need to understand the preparation you need to put in place for you to effectively treat this highly contagious disease. For example, it is not the regular laboratory that you have the test for COVID-19 are uh, done. It is at a level of some safety, BCL3, BCL4. And these are levels that you cannot get in the regular laboratory. The same way for the treatment, there are some minimum requirements that you cannot get from the ordinary facilities. However, superb your uh, facility or clinic is, there are some engineering control system, there are some administrative control system that must be in place before you can treat COVID-19. Even the way the air in that place moves, you must be able to drive it so that you have negative uh, air pressure, so that the air does not circulate. It is taken off from that uh, place that they are treating them. These are, these are the specifications that we need for us to be able to treat COVID-19 effectively. There is no facility, however high care is, that can take care of a COVID-19 patient perfectly in the private institutions. That is why we say private institutions should desist from treating COVID-19. However, it is not all patients who are coming to the private institutions that will be or will also will will be uh, COVID-19 positive because it is until they are tested before you know that they are COVID-19 positive. So, peradventure, you may have some patients who may have come to that hospital, and in the course of your treating them or in the course of your medical examination, you realize that this is highly suspicious of COVID-19. It is advised that those type of patients are referred immediately you know, because Dr. Francis, it is highly contagious. Yeah, Dr. Francis, sorry, sorry to cut you yes. in. I, I hear you when, when you say what you say, but again, you and I know that our, our testing capacity presently is still low. It's not as much as it should be for, for testings to be done effectively. Now, I'm of the opinion, given the fact that the NCDC has the template, the specifications, the technical, the administrative specifications for what should be obtainable for hospitals to qualify as testing and treatment centers, shouldn't they then impose on these hospitals and it, by way of equipment, this equipment needs to be important, I want to believe. Now, will it be out of place if this specifications, administrative and technical specifications, is laid down by the NCDC and once any private hospital means this requirement, these specifications, then they're allowed to, to take in these patients for, for treatment and for testing, for testing and for treatment? Well, I think we need to understand that these specifications are not things that can be done in a hurry. They are things that you start from the beginning of that building. There are things that you have to put in place for, for, from the conception of that facility. It is difficult for you to manipulate just because we have the emergency now and expect to meet up to that standard. Like we have said, testing of COVID-19 cannot be done in any open laboratory. Otherwise, you expose everybody to having uh, that infection. It is in some specific level of laboratory, level three, level four, level five. So I can tell you, even the private institutions cannot say that they can just change or do some modification for them to be able to treat COVID-19 in their facility. Right. It is better 
for us to ensure that they are treated in the accredited uh, uh, institutions so that we can have the best uh, results from the treatment. Right. Over 17,000 people in Africa have been infected and nearly 1,000 lives have been lost to the pandemic. And now the Economic Commission for Africa, that's the ECA, has warned without adequate protection over 300,000 Africans could lose their lives to COVID-19. Do you also subscribe to this belief and why? Well, certainly one of the major problems we have in Africa is that we have a very weak health system. And again, if you see the way that COVID-19 is transmitted through aerosol, you know that any place that you have high concentration of people, the rate in which it can be transmitted is very high. So for these specific, uh, specific issues in Africa, coupled with poverty, which is already prevalent in African countries, which because of all this one, every African nation must be geared towards preventing this COVID-19 because if we get into a full-blown community transmission, I can tell you that we'll have a lot of issues in our health system being able to cope with the treatment. Are we going to talk about the number of ventilators that we have? They are grossly inadequate. What about the, the, the bed spaces that we have? So we are increasing them, but these are makeshift things that cannot stand the rigors of very high density patient, uh, uh, patient uh, inflow. So it is better for us to ensure that Africa do everything in the preventive measures so that we do not get this uh, community transmission, which is one of the most fearful things for anybody who is in the health sector in African countries. Dr. Francis, I need your medical um, opinion on this. The NCDC has now threatened to shut down these defaulting hospitals. Do you think this would be a good move? And if you do agree that it's a good move, why, why do you hold such an opinion? Well, there are some things that we call unethical behavior. It is unethical behavior when you are doing things that is beyond your capability. Treating COVID-19 patients in an open uh, facility is unethical. And even if they are not going to close down the hospital, they will need to decontaminate the hospital. For them to decontaminate the hospital, you have to stay for some days before you can take more patients. So, coupled with being an unethical uh, behavior, as well as need to decontaminate so that you don't have any patient walking in with one disease and going back with COVID-19 infection, all of this will make that hospital to be closed. And I think I subscribe to it. Do, do you have any other recommendations? What could be an alternative instead of to a total shutdown of these hospitals? The recommendation is anybody who has seen any, any patient who shows sign of COVID-19 infection or who are diagnosed COVID-19 patients should refer them to the proper isolation or treatment centers where they should have their treatment. They should not at any time attempt to treat COVID-19 patients in their facilities. Oh, I, I see your stance in this, Dr. Francis, but, but do you see any partnership in the nearest future between the NCDC and the private hospitals? Now, after being properly guided by the NCDC, being forged eventually in the fight against COVID-19? This cannot be something that can be done in a hurry. It cannot take a day. It cannot take two weeks. Yeah, but we don't, we, don't have an, we don't have an end in sight yet for the pandemic. There is no end in sight yet. So do you possibly you see... Need, yeah. You need to properly train your staff. No, I mean, there's no end yet to the, to, the, to the... There's no end to the pandemic. There's no end in sight yet for the pandemic. So do you see any possible collaboration, partnership between the NCDC and these private hospitals? I, w I will still subscribe that instead of extending to private hospitals, they should insist that we continue in public hospitals because they have more capacity, they have people who are better trained, and we can have better results from there. All right. Now, I'm coming to your association, Dr. Francis. Your association, the NMA, has stated that patients who refused 
to disclose their travel history and other necessary information are endangering its members. Now, would, would not receive the best treatment, they said also. Now, why do you think these patients will do so, hiding their medical history, their health history? And what could we do to encourage them to be more open? As it is, we have a lot of people who believe that they will be stigmatized if they are COVID-19 suspects. And that is one of the reasons why we have had people who are not willing to give the full medical history. Uh, what we need to do is to let them know that COVID-19 uh, infection does not confer death sentence. 95% of those who are infected will recover even without any major treatment. Okay? So they should be able to be open so that they can appropriately classify them and get their diagnosis early enough. But by not giving those information, because doctors and medical and other health workers are not people who can see, they are not uh, uh, diviners. There is no way they can know the diagnosis except with the information you have given them. But if you are not giving them such information, you are actually making them to be susceptible to being infected with that COVID-19. That is a human, and we, we want to plead with our patients to, uh, to ensure that at every time they give the proper medical history. Now, what collaborations are there between your association and the Nigeria Center for Disease Control when it comes to information, the dissemination of information to sensitize the general public to, to come forward and know that, you know, COVID-19 is not a dead sentence. Is there so much of collaboration between your association and the NCDC to put out more information out there to the general public? As it is, I must tell you that uh, the association has uh, the specialists that are both treating and the specialists that have the knowledge and the specialists that can give the necessary information out there. On our own, we are doing that we have set up committees in all the states and the federal capital territory uh, in, of, of the federation. And we have been able to have some ICE, information, communication, and education uh, 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 platforms where we have been educating the people generally. I can assure you we are also discussing and following up the activities of the NCDC and we we'll continue to do our best both in treatment in giving the necessary information and in uh, giving advice as technical people to the NCDC and the Ministry of Health and even the pre uh, Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. All right, Dr. Francis, this is quite personal. In your line of duty in, in recent times, have you come across any patient that contracted the virus? I have been more on the administrative side. Okay. I have not been at the uh, isolation side, but I can tell you that we have many doctors who have uh, been able, who have met or who have seen patients who are COVID-19 positive, oh, even I mean, at the normal general hospitals. Oh, I, I asked you that. Complaints, All right. and then, I ask you that because there, there seems to be a myth. Some Nigerians who don't believe that, you know, um, that, that COVID-19 exists, and some even believe that they're immune completely to, to coronavirus. What could be informing such a myth and such, such belief? Unfortunately, we have a lot of charlatans in Nigeria. We have a lot of people coming out with different theories. We have a lot of people who say that uh, they have a cure for COVID-19 even when COVID-19 has not even gotten to Nigeria. We have a lot of people who, who uh, show prowess in uh, things that are forefathers or whatever it is. But I can tell you all of them are not correct. COVID-19 is a new virus that has just come. And it is about four months old because it came in December uh, 2019. And we're in, May, in April now. So it is difficult for anybody to say he has a cure for it because you have to test it and we have to assure that. But again, another myth that we have seen is initially when they say COVID-19, because it's coronavirus, I cannot stay in Africa because Africa is hot, is hot or hotter than uh, China where it, uh, it, it started. Yeah. But I can tell you it is not true. Every, every part of the world 
is affected with COVID-19 as we are speaking now. Okay. Another one is that it does not affect black people. Uh, we have had so many black people in the United States of America, in the United Kingdom, as well as in Nigeria and other African countries who have succumbed to this COVID-19 disease. So I want to employ everybody and tell them that COVID-19 is real. Our people are dying. A doctor or two doctors have died from COVID-19 and everybody should protect and prevent himself from getting infected with COVID-19. Right, Dr. Francis, now the, the WHO, the World Health Organization, has stated that, um, let's, let's talk about um, data and statistics now. Now, by WHO, they did state that the, the statistics in Africa significantly underestimate the true number of cases due, due to low testing capacity. How do you react to this? I want to agree with uh, the WHO uh, in totality and uh, what the Nigerian Medical Association is trying to do to bridge the gap is that we want to do uh, we want to involve ourselves in the validation of the mass screening kits. Uh, you know the, w the WHO because of uh, sensitivity of COVID-19 uh, infection had insisted that it is the PCR machine which is which will take a longer time that will be used to confirm COVID-19 uh, positive patients. However, we have so many mass screening uh, 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 kits that we can do anywhere, just close by to anybody's house, and you can have a, fair good, a fairly good result. What the Nigeria Medical Association is planning to do is to set up a committee. We have actually set up the committee to have that validation of that screen uh, kits, and if they are all right, we can increase the number of screening. However, those who are positive, we need to undergo a confirmatory test with the PCR machine. Right. And what, we, what that will do is to reduce the clock of the total number of people that will be waiting for uh, their results from that machine that takes a longer time uh, than normal. And those who are negative, they can go to the uh, to the to, to the post society and continue to apply their trade, so okay. that we don't have a lot of awaiting uh, reports or those who are expecting their results. All right, Dr. Uh, Francis. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. Sorry, um, we we're, we're out of time with you, but just before I let you go, finally, how, how would you rate the fight against the pandemic in Nigeria, and what do you think could we we could improve on, and what advice do you have for the citizens of Nigeria in just sixty seconds, if you will? My advice for this, to the citizens of Nigeria is that uh, COVID-19 is real. It is very painful that we are having lockdown in some epicenter. I want to appeal to all Nigerians that it is things that is the sacrifice that we have to make for us to be able to live a better life thereafter. Let us continue to wash our hands, use the sanitizer, the physical distancing we must ensure and avoid large crowds, which all the cooperation with everybody, we can overcome COVID-19. Dr. Francis Fadjoyile, it's been such an interesting and engaging conversation with you. Thank you for your time and for your contribution on PLOS Politics. Thank you very much. And thanks for staying with us. Up next, an APC senator wants the Palliative Distribution Committee disbanded. This is Up next for discussion. We'll be right back. <laughs>